managing a universe full of data at NASA. I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet and Tech Republic, and joining me is Dr. David Messa, Chief Knowledge Architect at NASA. Welcome, David. Thank you very much for having me, Tanya. Absolutely. What does a Chief Knowledge Architect at NASA do, and in, in what domains do you operate? Well, with Chief Knowledge Architect, I've developed a framework where I take a look at three different domains and how we turn our data into actionable knowledge. So the way I define knowledge architecture is the combination of knowledge management, knowledge informatics, and data science. Where knowledge management is a strategy for how we create, identify, store, and visualize, and analyze our data. Knowledge informatics is the pipeline that allows our data to get transmitted over to our end users. And then of course, data science are the algorithms and methodologies we use to turn data into actionable knowledge. You're on a panel at South by Southwest to discuss the topic of data science unicorns and a silver bullet AI. So are the capabilities of data science and AI becoming a bit overhyped or just are they just misunderstood? Well, I don't consider them overhyped, and I think we're starting to understand their capabilities a lot better. Um, but it's, there's a lot of different ways that we can use data science, artificial intelligence, in order for us to be able to make sense of the data that surrounds us. Uh, especially at NASA, where we have such a uh, plethora of data that gets tra transmitted to us from all different types of data domains, uh, we have to be able to use various types of algorithms and methodologies to turn that data into something that's useful to us, from our telemetry or our earth scientists, even down to our project data, in order to make sure that we have the answers we need at the right time. Is a PhD in data science and a decade of experience required to be useful, or are there other ways to gain the skills needed to manage and utilize these huge data sets? I'm not going to say that a PhD is necessary. Um, of course, the more I believe in education and the more somebody wants to learn, I think it's very helpful for them. However, in data science, since this, this new avenue or new, new work in data science has been coming up in the last decade or so, uh, I've noticed that the coming, people that are going into data science are coming from all different walks of life and all different disciplines, from computer science to database administrators and uh, visual, visualization experts. Uh, so I think if anybody has, an, uh, has a willing to learn how to work with data, uh, there's so many different things you can do within the data science realm. You don't you necessarily have to have a PhD, just a willingness to learn how to work with data in various forms and formats and make it visible to our end users so they can re retrieve the answers they're looking for. How have you seen miscommunication affect data-oriented uh, projects and what should project participants do to stay aligned? So, when I look at data, you know, I find that people are, are taking this data in so many different ways. They don't really understand the formats that is coming to them and they end up not able to find and, and, and locate the data they're looking for. So in my realm, what I really focus on is trying to be able to find the proper amount of data across the different domain sets. So really what we need to focus on is how do we turn that data into actionable knowledge by understanding the connections across the various data uh, domain sets that are available out there. Uh, so that's gonna require a lot of understanding from different types of uh, organizations uh, and how we not only search for that data, but how we, we co correlate the data, how we're able to express that data in a way that's useful to our end users. What are some of the most interesting projects that you've actually worked on at NASA? Well, I've worked on a lot of different projects at NASA for in my 20 plus years there, primarily in a lot of the IT world. But recently, um, one of the ones that I've, I've really looked at and worked on and was really interested in was when we took the comments from our astronauts that are coming down the International Space Station and try to get an understanding for what they life is like on the International Space Station. So to, to give you a little uh, background information on what we do there, every time an astronaut comes down from the International Space Station, they get debriefed on life on the station. From how was the food, how was the exercise equipment, how did the experiments go, how were the IT, every element within the International Space Station has to be understood so that we can make it better for the next astronauts. Well, over the 15 years that we've been going up there, we have probably well over 90,000 comments uh, on all these different types of categories. In the past, what an engineer or human factors engineer would have to do is take a look at all those comments by hand, read them, 
correlate them, collate them, theme them, put them into different ways and, and that makes it sense to them. And then to be able to get an understanding of what those comments are trying to say. That could take anywhere from two weeks to a month uh, when you're looking at, at a several thousand comments they have to go through. What we did in my team of uh, data scientists, we were able to take those same uh, instructions that, of trying how to, how to get that information out and extract that information out and put that into uh, different types of algorithms that we were able to, to shorten the time frame down from th two weeks down to two days in order to get that information for our human factors engineers. What is the best way for business managers and consumers of organizational knowledge to engage with their organization's knowledge architects? I mean, what are the right questions to ask and what are the right expectations to have? Well, when an organization starts to talk to knowledge architects, they really need to understand where their data is located. So when I look at knowledge architecture, I break it down into four different concepts. First of all, there's the storage of the data. You know, how is it stored, where is it stored, what type is it, what type of format is it stored in. Then there's the integration to it. How do we integrate with that data? Is it through an API? Is it through ODBC or JDBC connections? Is it through, just through a website? What are the ways that we integrate with that data? And then how do we analyze that data? So what are the different types of, uh, uh, not only just the, the algorithms that are available, but the actual tools that allow us to do this and to work, that, that landscape is really increasing. We need to really understand the different types of uh, applications and tools we utilize to analyze. And then finally, how do we go in a visualize that data? So what I usually try to explain this to folks in, in, in my presentations, I talk about it from an end user's perspective. End users don't really care where the data is, they just want an answer to their question. So for an end user to get the answer to the question, they need to be able to visualize that data. In order for us to visualize that data, we have to be able to analyze that data. In order to be able to analyze it, we have to be able to integrate or connect to and, and extract that data. But in order to extract that data, we have to know where it's stored. Uh, so it all boils down to making sure we understand where the data is stored and how we're, how we're keeping it in our systems. Dr. David Mesa, Chief Knowledge Architect at NASA. If somebody wants to connect with you, maybe they want to find out more about your work, how can they do that? Well, they can reach, reach out to me at Twitter, uh, David Mesa one or they can actually go to my LinkedIn with the same name, David Mesa one and I'd be more than happy to connect with them and share any information I have. Sounds good. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic, or go to my website, tanyahall.net. I've got links to all my social sites. Thanks for watching.